Um, one thing that Brandon brought up was um, whenever I am, uh, people are asking questions or they have a situation, I'm able to send them to a resource uh, as a reference to help them better understand. Uh, additionally, I'm also able to tell stories to help people better understand concepts uh, and how to apply certain things that um, I've learned along my way and along my journey. So I'm excited today because that is the genesis for the conversation I want to have with folks on how to think about this. Uh, it may not be as an interesting subject uh, as typically Beta Sam or Sam Gov or that kind of stuff, but I think. This is a very important subject because uh, one of the issues that we are all struggling with, uh, most of the people that are following me, is that uh, there is a wealth gap in this country and it is in the trillions of dollars. And uh, if we do not make a difference, if we do not change our ways, if we do not uh, make an effort to grow and develop and be successful, uh, that wealth gap will continue to increase. So there is, we're not allowing for victims here. Um, we're going to talk about, right, some ideas uh, and give people actionable things to take away. So with that said, let's see who's in the building. 16 people watching. Let me know who you are. Tell me who you are, what city you're from. Tell me the industry that you serve. And of course, as always on Wednesdays, we invite people up to speak. So if you want to come up to speak, uh, I'll be happy to let me drop the stream yard in there. If you want to come and speak? Here you go. Here's your opportunity to come up and speak. Uh, but we definitely want to talk about mindset today. Uh, I've got some ideas of things that I want to share, particularly uh, with folks out there. So, who's in the room? I see Maria's here, Jerome Hurd's here, Jacob Anderson. Uh, hit the thumbs up, give us a like. Uh, What's going on, everyone? Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, my name is Eric Coffey. Uh, I assume most people know that. But yeah, excited to be here. Uh, Nisi says, you know, following me for years, yet to get my first contract. Uh, and we're going to talk about that, right? We're going to talk about um, all those things today. So again, uh, I'm look on Wednesdays. If you're new, if you've never joined me on a live, typically Wednesdays we bring people up here upstage to talk about their particular issues, uh, and so we kind of work through that. But I definitely want to talk about mindset today. Uh, this uh, first time here, welcome. Tell me again if it's your first time here. Uh, let me know who you are. Tell me their city and tell me the industry that you're in, so that we know. All right, let's see. Yvette Harris, Southern California Education Leadership Workforce Development. Um, and yeah, like, like seriously, what's happening right now, and thank you, Yvette, for saying that. And let me just stick with this theme, right? So uh, Yvette does workforce development, uh, leadership training, education. Uh, I literally today was looking at a... GAO, Government Accountability Office report that stated that the government is having challenges in the areas that she's, all three areas right here that she pointed out, the government's having challenges in finding people to be able to do those things. Um, and we are seeing that across industry wide. Uh, so we're seeing that at DOT, DOE, uh, we're seeing that at NASA, we're seeing that at uh, FEMA, we're seeing that, um, uh, what was the other ones they gave me? Um, um, Department of Education, Department of Transportation, FEMA, Department of Energy. Uh, those are the ones that came on top of my head. But literally, they're struggling with these, these, these issues right now. In fact, because Yvette put her stuff up there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something, Yvette, that I responded to uh, recently. Um, literally this program that um and we'll talk about it Yvette. and again you see when you put your stuff in here then we could talk about these different things but if you don't tell me what you do and who you are then i can't help you 
right? So let me just share this. So Yvette, this is something that I responded to actually Monday. Uh, this is the Department of Commerce uh, and particularly EDA, uh, which is the Department of Commerce and Economic Development Administration. And uh, they put this request out looking for uh, entities that had structured programs that build capacity, creates jobs and addresses challenges to communities grappling with persistent economic distress and high crime age unemployment. They were looking for uh, to, to look at metrics to assess successful programs, design competitive, inclusive, accessible grant funding selection process, best practices to effectively support persistently economically distressed areas. And they've got a $200 million budget. But the challenge is, right, that most people out here have no idea and they think that this is harder than it is. And in fact, the reality is the government is struggling to find all of us. And so the reality is, is that there's so many places to go and there's so many places to look for the information that it's difficult trying to do all this stuff on your own. And that's just like, that's just the facts, right? So it's really difficult for us trying to actually uh, figure out like, where's all this stuff, right? Like, where is it at? And then at the same time, the government's sitting here saying, where's all the people? There's a huge disconnect. Uh, so uh, I wanna talk about that, right? Because I think, what I'm seeing, uh, behavior and the communities that I'm dealing with, I spoke to a buddy of mine um, and he talked about that. He's in real estate and he actually, we haven't spoken in years and he, he praised me today for coming on and sharing, um, you know, my information. And he's like, Eric, that's amazing that you're publicly sharing all this stuff. And one of the things that, I talk about is that um, this is not a zero sum game at all, right? This is not a zero sum game. Uh, by the way, if you're just joining us, make sure to tell us who you are, tell me what you do, and tell me the city that you're in so that other people can find you, connect with you, and you can start building your own tribe and community as well. That's the point of all this, right? Uh, don't just be on here talking and listening to me, which I appreciate. But make sure you're connecting and talking with fellow people because the theme, right, is that we want, uh, we've gotta, we're going to have to work together. We're going to have to come together. We're going to have to uh, work with other people in, in order to grow, in order to scale, in order to have other folks handle the things that are, different, that are difficult for us. We need people. And the majority of us on here are trying to do this alone. Uh, I can tell you right now. Um, for someone saying that they've been following me for four years, they haven't won a contract, they probably haven't engaged with any of my people, right? And because the people that are around me in my circles are constantly winning contracts. They're constantly, um, literally today, we had meetings uh, with uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers who has a $100 billion 10-year contract, and they only had nine companies show up. And I keep saying this theme over and over and over again because until you guys get it until you decide right like hey let me step out here and reach out to some folks and talk to some people right like i encourage you all the time talk to my podcast guests talk to my students uh, oftentimes i'm calling out people's names are you reaching out to them are you engaging with them Right. And so if the answer is no, then the onus is on you to figure out which, why, like, why did you not do that? Right. Like what made you decide not to to take action for your betterment? So let's go back to today. I've been kind of rambling. Uh, so let's go back to today's conversation. Right. Uh, interesting enough, it's true that I do always have stories to tell and I can relate to anybody's situation. Uh, because I have, I'm very well read and I'm a student and I'm constantly learning. And I think that the challenge with a lot of people is that they are not. 
And uh, so they're hoping somehow by osmosis, they're going to get it. And that's not going to happen. So again, tell me who you are. Tell me what you're doing. Let's talk about some resources, right? First of all, like how many people, how many people have Judy's book? If you're one of my students and you sign up for my programs, we sent you out this along with my two books. Here's my other book. Oh. How many people have my book? How many people read the book? Right? Look, 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 hold on. Look, I don't even know this person. I, three months after signing up with DLA, we won a contract thanks to GovCon Giants. Okay. People say to me, ask me questions that are answered in this book. It's like 13 bucks. I'm gonna give you an example for those of you, by the way, buying it and owning it is not the same as reading it. Just I want to put that out here. In the book, and, and again, I have looked at this myself, right? This is literally a script that I wrote to the government that I sent to them that I'm sharing in the book. Look. Screenshot it. Okay. Do you see what this says? I wrote this script. I sent it to the government for PPE, and we landed $18 million in contracts. And I put this stuff in here. The script. I set up capabilities briefings, right? Who do we set up capabilities briefings with? Office of small business, right? The reason why my shirt says one Ostabu call away, because like the person said, we're one call away from the person, the decision maker, to help us get our first contract. How many people out here, uh, again, if you've never had a contract before, would a $100,000 contract help you? Would a $200,000 contract help you? What about a $100,000 grant? What about a $100,000 prize? So if you don't have a contract, if you've never won anything before, right? What about why are you not signing up to our list where we're doing helping to provide technical assistance training for the Department of Energy's prize? I'm curious, right? Why are you not on that list? Why are you not here? I'm gonna pull it up right now. I'm not, listen, why are y'all not on this list right here? Why, why have you not signed up? This is Department of Energy Rural Communities Prize. It's $100,000 for an idea. Not to do anything except provide an idea. Why have you not signed up for that? Why have you signed up? Right? So I'm gonna it's gonna be on everybody today. We're gonna talk about this. All right. I'm gonna drop the link in here real quick to sign up for technical assistance. But I'm gonna make you guys have to be more I'm gonna make everyone accountable. Uh let's talk. Da -da -da. By the way, there's some people on here. Okay, that look, a man said, even a twenty dollar contract helped me get my feet wet. So Umar, then you should be signed up on that list right now. Okay, right now you should be signed up on the list. I just dropped it, Airtable. That's to provide technical assistance to help you guys get that prize. We already put out a video last week where we went over the requirements. It's it's literally like a five page document, but it's less. It's a couple hundred words and a three minute video and it's an idea of how you can help save energy in rural communities who can't do that okay so look we have people on here i want you to see something because i'm gonna I'm look if you're on linkedin if you're on linkedin go follow susan mitchell right now okay uh, where's my workforce score? Yvette, where are you at? I know you're on YouTube today. Take a screenshot. Go follow Susan Mitchell. All right. I promise you. I promise you, you will not regret it. Uh, Susan and I work closer together. Uh, we speak regularly. Connect with her. You might not get to me, but connect with Susan. All right. 
Jim Barry, Washington office, contracting office, furniture, installation design, 8A. I look at that. All right. Um, we've had so many. Again, if you don't tell me what you do, I can't offer suggestions for you. All right. Love it. I love it. Who else do we have out here? Monica, you didn't tell us what you did. Okay. All right, listen. Let's, so let's jump into some things. Um, so one thing I want to talk, I want to go over, which is very interesting. There was a book. I'm going to start off with this book. Anybody ever heard this book before? Okay. Does anyone know who Reginald Lewis is? Anybody know who Reginald Lewis is? All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something because again we're talking today we're talking about mindset right so this is not this is not a government contract training class today so if you are looking for government contract training we're not training government contract today so um, we're gonna talk about mindset as it relates but again yeah Susan knows about it right people know Reginald Lewis. But most people haven't read this book because it's really thick. So they haven't actually read the book, right? Um, and so interesting enough, right? The thing that, the parallel that I drew from this book that again, when I spoke uh, in DC a month ago was here, okay, it says that Mr. Lewis started networking in the black business community. Uh, and what he did was he began to hang out with a select group of young black businessmen involved in a world of high finance. Right. OK. Uh, and then it talks about some influential people he spent time with. Another person in his circle was an investment house and was the first minority owned member of the New York Stock Exchange. And we're going to skip over to this part that I highlighted in orange. In 1975, right, uh, this particular company bought Chicago-based All Fresh Foods with a million dollars in Mesbic financing. Okay. So the key is, you see that? Mesbic financing. All right. What is Mesbic financing? This is the part where people miss about the story, where I draw parallels to everything that we're doing. And this is the part that I brought up. So let's look at, right? Because most people know the story of, right? Reginald, but they don't know what Mesbic financing is. And in order to find out about Mesbic financing, we got to go way back in history, right? And this is an Inc. article from 1981. White House proposal for 20% reduction in SBA loans guaranteed. Include this category as direct loan funding from minority bit enterprise small business investment companies. All they have not decided whether the mess break even on a limited basis. And sorry, no. Look, this is going back to 1981, 88 programs, people. Okay, so the first black billionaire use SBA program to help other black businesses launch and get started. And through that, we can continue reading on, right? After doing that for, let's go into the book. It says, uh, he did Mesbic transactions for 14 years, but he began to feel more and more trapped as he was in a, what he called a legal ghetto. However, the Mesbic program taught him how to buy companies and that he would use all those things that he did to end up buying, doing learning acquisitions and then becoming a billionaire. But it started off with the Mesbic program, which was an SBA program that provided loans to black owned businesses. And so that's the part of the story that people don't know. Right. Uh, again, like I said, tonight, we're not talking about government contracting particularly. So uh, 
but we are talking about mindset. And so uh, this one is uh, a little bit different than my typical um, videos today, just because I think that it's such an important thing that we understand, right? Because what I find is that a lot of people, when, when they're talking to me, right? And even when they sign up for my program, so they ask me questions, most people are really lost. And so when I think about Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, the first thing he says that you have to have is definite of purpose. Most people are lacking definite of purpose. So they don't even know where they're going, right? And so that's a challenge that we they have to first address internally. Uh, so what I'd like to do is I want to give people some ideas of how to uh, achieve that, because I think that's going to help them change their trajectory and ultimately help them to become more successful. So uh, that's why I brought up that story about Reginald Lewis. So the reason why I brought that up is because uh, one of the books that I used to listen to a long time ago was a Thomas Stanley book. Uh, and it was called Networking with Millionaires. Anybody ever heard of the book Networking with Millionaires? Anybody ever heard of it? Here, I'll pull it up for you. Today's gonna be a book club day. Look, it's so old, that thing was on CDs. I used to play these CDs in my car. But why do I bring this up? Uh, because I wanna show the parallels between what Mr. Lewis did, how did he get into the Mesbrick program of high finance? He started networking in the black community, right? Uh, going over to the book, Network of Millionaires, this is something that all of us can do. Right. This is, I want to show you things that we can all do. All right. So in Network of Millionaires, the first thing it says is that most affluent people are members of one or more affinity groups. They include trade associations, professional societies, uh, mature citizen organizations, ecologically defined associations, political groups and alumni associations. Right. So one of the things it says, high performance networks gain endorsements for reasons that go beyond basic product service. They do extraordinary things, for example, may enhance. The revenues of prospects, in other words, they sell products. Products. So, let's talk about right. Um, let's just talk about strategies that I do. Right. So, um, does anyone ever think about right? Like even myself. Right. If you go back to my older videos, I was always drawing from my own experiences. Right. As a construction guy. Okay. Today. Right. I've done over 160 podcasts with various podcast guests of very scale scope sizes. So now I've increased my network. Right. And so guess what? Today, that's why I have people that are CFOs, investment bankers. Uh, we have people that I deal with that I get to stay in 10,000 square foot homes for free. I get to go to other countries for free. I get to go on yachts for free. Um, why? Because I've increased my network. And when I started doing these things and associate myself in these places, my network started to increase. So guess what that did? That gave me increased opportunities. And this is something that every, the 61 of you watching, this is something that every one of us could do. Everyone could do it. Now, guess what? All of you know Maria. Everyone starts to know Randy. Everyone starts to know my son, Brandon. And so now we're in places, right? Similarly to what, again, going back to Reginald Lewis, similarly to what Reginald Lewis did, right? We're doing very similar things. And guess what? You can do the same thing. Hmm? Does that make sense? Yes, no. By the way, if you're just joining us, make sure to drop in here. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do. Uh, tell me your industry and tell me what city you're in. So what I've done is I've increased my network, right? Which has correspondingly increased my net worth, which has given me the opportunity to extend that to people like yourselves. Uh, for those of you who want to take advantage of it. So now I'll show you something. I'm pulling it up right now while we're talking. Okay, so this was a... Uh... 
Here, I'll pull it up. All right, so this is, this is an event that um, one of my podcast guests held last week. Uh, you've probably seen him, Travis Mack. Uh, this was called the Melanin Network event, um, where he brought together uh, entrepreneurs, business people, finance folks, uh, all in the space, uh, very successful attorneys. Uh, and so he put us all together in a room and said, okay, let's network together, right? Uh, what you're looking at on the screen, uh, that's Fred Royal, J.P. Morgan, Middle Market. Uh, the guy next to him, Adrian, does private wealth for J.P. Morgan. Uh, this gentleman right here, I don't know his name, but he actually has a private equity fund. He's got about $4 billion under management. We've got uh, commercial real estate guys. Uh, we've got commercial lenders nas of national entities. Uh, city officials, uh, this is Jaime, who's private wealth as well, J.P. Morgan. Uh, this is Cliff, who's at the New York Stock Exchange, does IPOs, uh, lends capital to, uh, to Google, Facebook, entities like that. So again, how did I get here, right? How did I get in the room? I have a platform. I extend my platform to people now. And in turn... Right. They give back to me because what I give to them. And so now I have access to doing private equity, to doing uh, large loans. Uh, I went to I don't know if you saw this on LinkedIn, but I was at a, a real estate conference last week uh, and I met a gentleman who happened to go to the same university as me. And ultimately he has uh, he works for the largest lender, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac lender in the country for underwriting multifamily loans. The government is struggling to find good people. The government is struggling to find good companies. Uh, there is, in fact, a crisis where government entities are everywhere that we turn. The government is saying that there's a shortage, uh, that they can't find enough contractors to respond to their bids. This is no coincidence that someone would say they after three months they signed up, but they won their first contract. It's no coincidence. Uh, there's no coincidence that when I'm looking at opportunities, uh, they're telling me at the highest levels that they can't get people to even respond to grants or contracts. So in my opinion, uh, if you're on this call, if you're listening to me, if you're watching this, I don't care if it's you know in December, right? And you're saying to yourself that you don't have contracts, you haven't been able to... Who, are you talking to any one of us? Are you engaging with anyone in our communities? Are you reaching out to anyone who has some experience? Like where, where, what are you doing outside of using your, what's in your head, right? And trying to figure it out. What are you doing outside of that? Because if you've been on my lives, if you watch my content, I'm constantly saying that, right? Uh, be be if not don't be afraid to reach out to the people that's on here right that's why i keep saying tell people what you do get on here and let people know what you do how else are you going to expand your networks connect with folks right and umar we're going to talk about that yes we will i totally believe that mindset has to do with their vision and the mission in life 100 percent. by the way just for clarity folks okay the, the, so I have all this stuff here for you today. I know, and I'm supposed to finish by eight. I promised Maria I'd get off here by eight. So I'll try to be brief, but I get excited. So I can't help but, you know, like run my mouth. All right, Umar, to that point. Yes, totally. Totally my head has to do with it. This book, you see how thin this book is? This book's like 30 pages, okay? Uh, like it makes no sense, right? That people have not read this book and it's 30 pages and it's probably like $5. And it says thought and action are the makers of fate. And it says among the powerful lessons in the book, the effects of thought on the body and health, how thoughts influence purpose, how thoughts influence achievement, calmness of mind influences growth and success. You will become as small as your controlling desire, as great as your dominant aspiration. Screenshot it.
A message to Garcia. Anybody seen this one? Message to Garcia. All right. So people say, Eric, how do I meet successful people? Here you go. That's it. That's it. By the way, another super thin book. You can read this in 45 minutes. I posted on my Instagram today, right? It says if you put 100 hours in, right, 100 hours in for the year, which is 18 minutes a day, it says you'll be better than 95% of the people in whatever that area is. First step. Anybody seen this book before? Money Code? Again, another thin one. Uh, Justin, we're not talking about government contracts today, brother. So if you're just joining us, we are not talking about government contracting today. Uh, so we are talking about mindset. Right. Uh, Umar, this is excellent. Uh, so I appreciate you watching videos, right? But uh, let's. It's funny because I feel like you guys are always setting me up for my next answer. <sighs> Don't let the opinions of the average man sway you. Dream and thinks you're crazy. Succeed and he thinks you're lucky. Acquire wealth and he thinks you're greedy. Pays no attention. He simply doesn't understand. All right, the first book, again, was As a Man Thinketh, Message to Garcia, Money Code. These are all, like, super thin books. You can read all these books in one night. Like, all three of these, you should, you can read all three of these in one, like, in one night, literally. Like, I think maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. All right. Uh, this book, and it's funny, I want to say something about this. This book, let me show you something what I thought was interesting. By the way, did all you guys follow uh, Susan? Susan is phenomenal. Listen, if I tell you to follow Susan, right, y'all better listen. Because if I'm telling you something, right, uh, listen, okay, I'm going to show y'all. Susan, are you here still? Susan, Guardians of Honor, are you here? Let me see if Susan's here. Okay. You do not know, right? We talk about network is your net worth, right? I told y'all to go follow Susan. Susan, where are you at? This is this is why I do what I do. Okay. Um because Susan, she knows who she is. I think Susan left, which is fine, because Susan's a very busy person. I'm going to show y'all who Susan is, that I told y'all to follow, that you, for all of you that just said, ah, oh, you know, he's just talking. See, this is another thing that we don't do. We don't actually do the things that, like, people say. We dismiss it. I think that's one of the reasons why I found, like, my the women in my groups are the most successful, because they trust what I say, and they just do it. Um, and they don't ask questions. Whereas men, like ask questions. Uh, so Susan Mitchell, Bruce Harris, uh, she was in here earlier today. Uh, let me pull her back up. I said I recommended everybody go follow her right here. Susan Mitchell, Guardians of Honor. I think she left. It's fine. She's probably busy, um, but that's okay. So let me show y'all. Who Yvette? Are you still here? Okay, I see you, Yvette. All right. Yes. So Yvette says. You see what, Yvette, do you see what Susan does? Workforce development? Okay. Now, let me show y'all. I told y'all to go follow Susan. See, this is, you guys, one thing about me, like, I may not be, like, hype like those other fake, like, YouTube people talking about they do real co contract stuff. My people do contracts. Contracts for real. Like, we really do contracts. I'm going to show y'all Susan. Ready? I hope y'all sitting down. I hope y'all sit down. Let me show y'all Susan. Wait. 
Oh, it wants me to be a registered user. All right, sorry. Well, I think you can read behind the blurry screen, right? So you see Susan's name, Guardians of Honor. Do y'all see this part up here? Can somebody read it? Somebody, somebody, I want y'all to type in what it says at the top, then I know you read it, then I'll pull up the screen. Yes? Yeah, I got it? Okay, yeah, that's what I told y'all to follow. So when I tell you something, okay, I'm telling you for a reason. <laughs> I'm telling for a reason. Listen, these are people that are in our network. These are the people who I'm connected to. These are the people who I'm talking to. So what I'm telling you, when I say, look, follow these people, okay, I'm telling you for a reason. I know, I know what is going on in the marketplace. I have my pulse on the market. All right. I want you to have your pulse on the market. This is all we do. This is like we live this all the time. Okay. And this is what I'm trying to bring to folks out here when I say, look, don't be afraid to reach out to my podcast guests. Don't be afraid to reach out because I'm telling you, I, I interact with these folks and they tell me, Eric, um, now let's let's talk about that. One of the things that you don't have that I see a lot of people when they're reaching out is that you don't have definite a purpose. So you're calling people and you're saying, oh, will you mentor me? They go, what do you do? You said, oh, I just want to do government contracts. Wanting to do government contracts is not what you do. That don't tell nothing. What is your plan? What, what is your ideas? People come on here all the time and they say, Eric, I have a box truck. How do I help make a box truck work? Well, let me tell you the difference between the people that I deal with. Uh, I'm reading a book right now. Anybody knows Blackstone? You guys ever heard of Blackstone? Steve Schwartzman? Okay. Uh, I'm reading a book by Blackstone, Steve Schwartzman, and... Uh, one of the things that they said is start reading books written by billionaires. Sounds like a good plan to me. So I'm reading this book right now by Steve Schwartzman. Okay. Right? What it takes. When you read the books by billionaires, they're totally like. Their brains are way different than like regular people's brains. All right. Um, so when he first launched his fund, he told his partner, hey, we should go raise a billion dollars. His partner says, nah, I think that's too much. Uh, maybe we should stick to like 50 million. And he says, well, um, yeah, or 100 million. He says, well, if we raise 100 million then we can only do, right, you know, four or five deals, and they're going to be in the size of 20 to $30 million deals. We're accustomed to doing 50 to $100 million deals. If we raise a billion dollars, then we can do, you know, 20 or so 50 to $100 million deals. And if we leverage that with bank finance, we could do, you know, 800, whatever, billion dollars in deals. The, the, thing, the thought process is crazy. It's totally different. So... One of the things that he said in the book was that he had a chance to invest in Bloomberg, right? So when Michael Bloomberg was one of was uh, starting his company, um, he had a chance to invest in Bloomberg for like a hundred million, and he passed on it because it, it didn't fall into his thesis. Well, when Bloomberg came to him, Bloomberg said, "I'm going to build the largest data mining company, whatever, in the world." Right? We Say, oh, uh, I got a box truck. What can you do with that? When he talked to Sam Zell, he said he's going to build the largest real estate firm in the world. We say, I've got two dump trucks. What can you, how can you help me? That's not a plan. They're going at it. Like, I want to build the biggest industry, the biggest this in the world. I want to be the America's top CEO. I want to be the largest. That's the mindset. That's the mentality that they have. And then they take that into them everywhere they go. 
Everywhere they go, they take that with them. Uh, so that's the kind of mindset that we have to have, right, in order to do the things that these people are doing, right? And again, anyone, anyone, right? I think Umar said that. Anyone can do it. So if you look at like just the titles of the book, right? Go big. Everything is interconnected. The best way to learn is by doing. So someone said, hey, Eric, I'm watching your videos, this and that. The best way to learn is by doing. Pursue worthy fantasies. I love, I love, listen, I love when people come to me and they say, Eric, uh, you know, like I have a notary, a mobile notary business. That's cool, right? But when I look at, right, for example, if I go to my book, The Millionaire Next Door, or we look at The Money Code, which talks about, and it says it here on the money code on the back of the book. It says Jews are estimated to be make up less than 1% of the world's population, 25% of the world's billionaires. And in 2009, 139 of the Forbes 400 were Jewish. They comprise a number of history's most important figures, 35% of Nobel Peace Prize winners. But in the book, it talks about Right, they're very intentional about the fields that they go into, the areas that they pursue. There's nothing wrong if you want to have a mobile notary service. But if you look at right the trajectory of that, what are you modeling? Right, uh, where where does that take you? Is that big enough for what is it that you're trying to do? And I think we go into things that we feel comfortable with, that we maybe feel like it's attainable and it's doable, and that's where the challenges are. And that's where we continue to face challenges. And that's why at the end of the day, someone, I think someone already said this, uh, it's really hard for us to get to where we're trying to get to um, by chasing small things. You can't chase small things. You gotta chase big things. By the way, uh, so a couple things. If you wanna access the recording later, this is gonna be everywhere. So you don't have to worry about that. This will stay on YouTube uh, for an indefinite time. So don't worry about it. I'm not taking it down. Uh, so an example of chasing something bigger, right? So again, someone said, how can they get connected with us? Well, the easiest way is we have, you know, if you haven't signed up for 3.0, giantscourse.com. That's our training program that we have. One of the things I want to say that we're doing differently this time is we've got what we call a small business accelerator. So we're going to start helping uh, people become certified so that you can have credibility that's saying you actually know how to do government contracting. And so I'm modeling after VC University. So at the end of 10 weeks, you're going to take some tests and you're going to be credentialed. Uh, and then uh, in the very near future, we are applying so that we can have an actual certification that's recognized and valid. Uh, and the idea is if people want to, right, if you want to increase your earning potential from the standpoint of jobs, these are the kind of jobs that, again, nothing wrong being notary, nothing wrong with, um, you know, uh, whatever, you know, cleaning floors, stuff like that. But there are jobs out here literally in this space, right, that if you have some experience, these capture management jobs. Right. I mean, you could see the kind of salaries you're paying. Right. And this is what's advertised. I know people that make five and six hundred thousand dollars doing this stuff. And it's literally the same things that we teach. It's literally they have fancy names and fancy titles. But really, um, the process of what they're asking you to do is the same thing. So we want to we want to for those people who do not want who really can't be entrepreneurs or don't want the headache of running a business. We want to prepare you for these types of jobs so that uh, we can start to close the wealth gap, leveraging the things that we're already good at, things that we already know, things that we do all day. Uh, so that's one of the things that that's one of the things we're working on. Now, going back to the mindset, the reason why I brought this up is because Federal government contracting is actually all the things, the tools that you need are available and they're free. 
everything is free, right? So, you know, if you go to acquisition.gov, you'll see forecast list. And again, if you don't know what that is, between my book and Judy's book, right, it tells you that what those things are and how to use them. Uh, the FAR is in there, right? The websites to search for contracts is in there. Um, how to talk on a capability statement is here. Um, setting up your profile is free. Doing the research is free. So I'm trying to find out, right, what are, by the way, let me put this in here real quick for you. If anybody wants to come up and speak, I'll drop this in, in the chat. All right, now I'm to speak. So all the tools that you need are available. So the challenge that I believe people are having, right, is not that they lack tools. I don't think it's tools, right? Uh, it's not tools that they lack, right? What happens is, let's talk about it. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So going back to my book club, Think and Grow Rich. How many people read this book? Think and Grow Rich. Any takers? This is, again, if you're anywhere online, this is one of the most famous books that they tell every business person to read. All right, look what it says. 12 steps to thinking real rich, burning desire, absolute faith, self-talk, say your goal yourself, specialize, imagination, plan, take massive action, be persistent, rebound from failure. Number 10, collaborate. Take risks, self-improvement. I think number 10 and 11 is where everyone who is telling me they have not won a contract, this is where you're failing yourself. You are not taking risks and you're not collaborating. Would you agree? If you have not won a contract, right, uh, and you've read this book, where do you think that you're falling short? I think it's, again, I think people are falling short because they're failing to collaborate and they're failing to take risks. That's where I think they're falling short. Because a lot of people are sitting back. And again, by the way, I don't feel guilty. My course started off at $97, then it was $297, then I had a $497, then I had a $697, then we had a $797, then we had a $997. And some of you were still watching me and didn't sign up. The person that said she's watching me for four years, I promise you, you've probably seen all those price changes. So you didn't bother collaborating. It wasn't worth $97. Bucks. It wasn't worth $200. Bucks to you. It wasn't worth $300. Bucks. We paid $300. Bucks for lunch for two people, right? It wasn't worth, I mean, I used to do free calls to people on YouTube when I first started. And then I used to do one hour calls to people who signed up for my programs. You're telling me that um, if you've read the book and you know this, what is the, what is the, what's the issue, right? So again, uh, to me, that's the people's issue is, they're not collaborating, right? Um, there's a lot of other things I could pick on, but I think that's the biggest one. And if you if you missed us in the beginning, we talked about how he became a billionaire, right? And the first thing that he did, right, on his path to becoming a billionaire is he started networking, right, with people in the community. That was his first thing that he did, right? So if you are sitting home and only watching, do not expect your situation to change. That's what I have to say on that. All right, let's go to a couple of things real quick. Somebody's back here that wants to come up real quick before I bring them on. Let me uh, cover a couple of things because it's 756 uh, real quick. A couple of the books I want to mention that are super important. And we'll... These two are my favorites. Uh, this book here is the book that I've gifted the most. 
So Tim Ferriss asked a question on his podcast. Uh, what book have you gifted the most? This book I have given gifted the most to other people. From the time I was in college, I was buying this book. I buy 10 of them and I give them away to my friends. Uh, it's funny because I open up to this page. So people say, Eric, Eric, why do you give away your information for free? You see what this says? Rich people think both, poor people think either or. By giving away my information for free, uh, all those things I mentioned earlier, right? And guess what? Now I'm in a room with people that are managing billions of dollars, billions of dollars, private equity firms, raising money from institutional investors, bringing me in on deals, making me their partners. Now I meet with CFOs that do have done transactions in the billions. They're now representing me, helping me evaluate companies. I've got companies calling me that want to sell for 30, 40 million dollar companies that want to help selling. Why? Because I give away my stuff for free. I have people in my groups that say charge, 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 charge people, charge them, charge them, charge them, charge. Guess what? That's fine if you want to charge. But guess what happens? You're going to limit the amount of people that you reach, the amount of people that you talk to. You're going to reach the amount of people that uh, that's in your network. You're going to, you're limiting yourself all the way around the board by doing that. All right. Um, one other thing, let me bring up in this book here. I want to show you. Um, James, I see you back there. And again, this is why I gifted this book so much. You see what that says? Rich people act in spite of fear. Poor people let fear stop them. If you're going off of what we said earlier, right, um, and we're talking about having faith, being persistent, right, taking action, Uh, most people on here probably came from, and again, there's some declarations I'll put up on the screen just for folks to read it. Uh, but most people came in here, came from poverty. So um, you probably didn't feel like you were poverty. I knew that where I lived at, I didn't feel like we were poor. Uh, and so at the end of the day, um, it's not like as though this is, a, this is a new experience for you. The problem is that you've gotten trapped and to the comfort of having, right, like safety, what you think is safety and security, and so you don't want to give that up. So, but let me let me bring the gentleman up and talk to him real quick, and let's have a conversation with my man James, Re uh, Delta Security. James, hey, how's it going, sir? I'm doing well. Yourself? Doing pretty good. Yeah. Tell us, tell us. Go ahead and pitch your company real quick first, since you're up here. Oh yeah, so my name is James Davis. I'm an Air Force veteran. I own 3 Delta Security, cybersecurity consulting firm. Um, so that's kind of been listening to you and your podcast and some of your YouTube videos for a while now. Yep. But um, been in the military a lot of times, you know, you know how to execute uh, a lot of things. So me being a new company owner and, you know, getting my certification process and things of that nature, I'm yep. just trying to figure out how to respond to proposals and, you know, get my capability statement down. So that I can market myself better to, you know, get some of those backdoor deals that you always talk about. So, you know, uh, one of the things that I will say that I've been learning and I've been talking to uh, even my executive team about is. Um, and it's it's not directly answering your question, but I'm going to tell you what I've been telling them is that we reach out to people. and We say, hey, how do I do this specific thing? Mm -hmm. My wealthy friends reach out. To, they what they do is they say. Wow, you're the expert. You're the person. What do you think I should be doing to get further along in my journey? So you ask a very specific question, which I can answer that, but it may not take you where you want to go. Understood. That makes sense. Yes, sir. And so I think that's a lot of times that where and even myself, I'm guilty of it. I had to learn from these wealthy people is that they go, Eric, I want to build a twenty million dollar business. What do you think I should do? See the difference in questions, James? Yes, sir. 
I'm about to talk to you about proposal writing and capabilities thing. Cool, I got you on that. But I mean, I think your bigger goal is probably build a 20, 30, 40 million dollar company. Correct. <laughs> See the difference in questioning? Yes, sir. This is the thing that that we are not taught. And again, it's not taught in schools. I only learn from hanging out with really rich people is that they give a lot of compliments. Uh, they flatter you. And then they say, this is this is what I want to do. What do you think is the best approach? They don't ask specific questions about specific items because you're only going to get answers to that, which you sought out. As opposed to saying, uh, I want to be the uh, largest uh, security, cybersecurity company in the Southeast. Much bigger vision, much bigger goal, right? Then I'm going to have bigger ideas for you. Yes, sir. If you ask me about proposal writing and like some other stuff, then that's all I'm going to give you. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. I just want to say that. By the way, your camera is super clean. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm like, yo, let me put on my camera, man. <laughs> a brand new laptop or something? Oh, no, this is, this is directly off my iPhone, actually. Oh, well, that's why. Yeah, those new iPhones are nice. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, uh, you better start streaming from my iPhone. Um, so now, let's go back. What question did you want me to answer? You said something about proposal writing? <laughs> well, now you didn't offer all those other questions. You know, now expands the conversation a little bit. <laughs> you know, he says about proposal writing or something. <laughs> what was your question about proposal? <laughs> well, now, yeah. So, well, you kind of you kind of hit on a few things. You were right. So that is a goal. I do want to be one of the bigger African American cybersecurity consulting firms. You know, this side of the Mississippi. I, I would love to help you know, and, and mentor other African American kids to get into this field. Because as you were talking about poverty, you know, I know a lot of kids don't know about ethical hacking and they don't know about, you know, cyber defense. So I would like to make the next generation of engineers. And that is a big goal of mine. So that is something I would like to, you know, probably join your program and we can just discuss because I do want to get to a point where I can, you know, start my own program to help kids and get them in the right areas. Now, see everyone listening, isn't it a much better presentation just all together than how to help with specific a very specific thing so that to me right first of all uh the second message you said gets me excited that energizes me right the first thing you said did not excite me understand <laughs> <laughs> like it, 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 it didn't move me right so now the second thing and i'm sure the people in the audience feel the same way they're like oh yeah, yeah that's now 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 you've got a bigger plan now you've got a bigger dream so now, right, we can start connecting you to some like players because when you go to them, that's what you're going to say. Yes, sir. You know, that's what you're going to say. Hey, look, no, nah, look, I recognize the, the poverty and disparity. And so I want to build programs to train people at scale, right, east side, east of Mississippi. Um, that's the kind of stuff that you want to talk about. Now, yes, people, sir. now people want to help you. So, so, so oftentimes we come at it. Right from that small mindset thinking, uh, and so this is a great example of that. So a couple of things that I would say uh, that, that uh, what I would start with, right? And and you said you, you're new to watching me. You're still new? Yeah, I've been watching you for about a year now. Okay, okay. Uh, so a couple of things that I would say um, that where I'd start at. One is, have you ever seen my podcast with uh, Colossal Contracting, Anthony? No, Colossal. Sir. Write that down. Um, Listen to his podcast. Um, you said you're a veteran? Yes, sir. Okay, so he hosts an event once a year in D.C. Make sure you sign up, get to his event, and then let him meet you. Yes, sir. Anthony, great guy. His partner, uh, Anthony's white. His partner's black. I think they do about uh, 80 million a year. Okay. Straight down to earth. He supports veterans. He gives back all the time. Second person, I would say, listen to is Jonathan Hart. Um, does a cybersecurity company as well. Uh, Jonathan, actually, a young man uh, reached out to Jonathan after hearing him on my show. I think it was an 18 year old brother. And he got an internship with Jonathan. After he graduated from college, he ended up getting hired by him. And he thanked me for that through listening to the podcast and reaching out. Okay, perfect. Um, so both of those gentlemen give back. They're very gracious uh, with their time. Uh, Jonathan, you might have to catch him at a conference. Um, there's one other guy that I had on my show, um, but those are the two main ones that I would say, um, that I know, um, that could definitely help guide you and mentor you. 
And um, with that kind of vision, you can support what you're doing. Uh, Caesar Nadar is another one. He would be probably third on my list. Caesar Nadar, he's out of Virginia. Where are you, where are you out of? Uh, Houston, Texas. Okay, that's fine. You get on a plane and fly out there. Yes, uh, Caesar Nadar regularly has events. Uh, I know his former head of BD, but again, uh, he does a lot of cybersecurity work. And he also has told me in the past, uh, and for those of you, I think uh, Chieftain's on here. Chieftain's met Caesar. Uh, anytime I, I've supported uh, Caesar's events, he comes in, he lets me go through his offices. He's got a, he's got a, it's called Cyber Hub out in Virginia where the military people come there. They do trainings as well. They use his space and he regularly hosts um, government personnel inside of his Cyber Hub building. Super, I mean, super easy to talk to. Um, he's not going to have time to mentor you. But I can tell you that if you go to any of his events, he will introduce you to people that can help change your life because he's very well connected. He sits on a lot of boards. He's associated with a lot of folks in that space that they can plug you in. And um, we can actually, I'm trying to think of, uh, those will be the three. Caesar will be the third. But Colossal, Anthony Clausen from Colossal Track Tank, um, and then Jonathan Hart. Oh, okay, one more. Uh, okay. Ali Bay. One more, Ali Bay. He was supposed to come to my event in California. Um, Ali Bay. Okay. He would also, he's another guy that um, would, would definitely, uh, is easy to talk to and approachable. And then you could talk to him about some of the pitfalls and some of the things that he's gone through, and he can help like, kind of guide you. Okay, perfect. Um, see, don't worry about no, don't, don't worry about no proposal right stuff. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Talk about your big vision and what you want to do, and then um, talk to them about some of their plans. Yes, sir. I uh, definitely will. I'll reach out. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So, and then listen, don't listen to people like Julia over here talking about people have big goals and they're looking for action. They, listen, I have a thousand videos online that you can watch all day about stuff. We have proposal writing videos, and you can sign up for our program and talk about proposal writing. Uh, that's easy. We've got we've got classes and that stuff. So today is not a day to talk about immediate action stuff. Today's day. My immediate action is buy these books and read them. So or sign up for one of our programs. That's my immediate action for today. Thank you though, Juliet. <laughs> She's one of my students. She's always she always got stuff to say. <laughs> so that's what I say, man. I, I wish you the best. Uh, you know, again, you know, talk to them. And, um, Bruce says he wants to find out more about our program. I dropped it in the chat, Bruce. Here's our program. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll show up. Right. All the information is here. If you have specific questions, uh, again, our numbers are there. Our emails are there. Our text lines are there. Right. So we have a repository of content that we've accumulated over the last four years that talks on the subjects of all the things that you mentioned. So proposal writing. Uh, bidding, capture management, uh, how to identify customers, all that kind of stuff is in my program, Bruce. So we go over all of that uh, in great detail. Uh, while everything I do talk about on YouTube, unfortunately, I don't get a chance to go into great detail on these subjects, right? So if I tell you how to do research, it literally might take three hours. So I don't, no one wants to watch a three hour YouTube video. So Bruce, when you get into the actual program, is where we go into like the granular level details of that. Uh, but we we do that, and then we have uh, right now I think it's like twenty three courses inside of three So consulting, middleman, all that kind of stuff, Bruce, we cover uh, from the beginning. How to actually register? How to do your proper profiles? How to do proper like all the stuff that's going to make you be able to market yourself better. We have all those things in there, including sample proposals, sample phone scripts, all that stuff. Bruce. So, uh, so, yeah, James, man, no, I'm, um, I'm happy to hear. It. I'm glad you came up. Uh, thank you for your service. Connect with those guys. As one thing for everyone listening, if you're a veteran, there are so many resources. So many people want to help you. Um, so do not be afraid to ask them. I promise you. Do not tell them. You know, listen to their stuff. Make sure you have something worthy to say. Uh, but do not be afraid to ask them. So many people really do want to help you out here. I'll be honest with you, James. Why do you want to help? Yes, sir. You? All right, brother. All yeah, right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Let me take this next call. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
Thanks. Take care. All right. Danny. Hey, what's going on? How are How you, man? Doing? I'm Good. doing okay. I'm doing okay. <laughs> How came up? You've been out there. You've been hanging out in the chat for a long time. Yeah. You know, just trying to listen, you know, you know, a lot of uh, fights in, in, you know, uh, in, in my head, you know, because uh, this one word that you, or one phrase that you said that it, it keeps, I keep fighting with it, which is, you know, working in your business, working on your business. Yeah. And, and you know the type of work that I mean, as you can see, this is my office. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, right. we're in Florida. We live in Florida, but I'm in, in East East Maine right now. You know, so, wow. And and it, it's um, it's a constant fight because it's it's like right. it's, you know because you got to stay busy to generate money and stay afloat. Yeah. And um, you know, and then. It's almost like, man, I want more time so I could, you know, work on our business because I know the potential. Sure, I know, sure. I know, you know, and and when we started doing this in, in you know, in 2018, you know, I come from coaching baseball. You know, I don't know if I told you that I'm iron worker, coach high school baseball, and um, so I'm a coach at heart. You know, I like that's something that, and um, when I got into transportation, I seen. You know, so many people in our community that is it's lacking information and, and right. to see something like this, man, I'm like, man, it's almost like I landed into something that I know it, it's going to be great. But it's it's like, where do I find the time now? <laughs> even <laughs> even with the even with the uh, what do you call uh, with the life or like I'm staying past my time right now because my son and I drive together. Okay. So we work schedule from 3 a.m. to 3 in the afternoon. It's my time to drive. And then, and then I, you know, I stay up a little bit till about 6.30 p.m., 8 o'clock. But I'm like, man, I know there's always a video or a phone call. You're like, yesterday I thought, you know, there will be a phone call that I didn't get to yeah, the message. Yeah. We had a fifth Tuesday in a month. Yeah, it went to the junk. So I didn't, I, I, I and that's how I, I'm like, oh, no, here was the, you know, the, the message. But either way, you know, so it's, it's like I almost feel guilty not finding time to work on our company. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. So this is something that um, for all of you who have not read this book, The E-Myth, it says why most small businesses don't work and what to do about it. So we come in, right, to, um, again, my example uh, is, right, what is the vision, right? Like, are you saying, hey, I want to have 50 trucks. I want to say I have 100 trucks, okay. right? Um, and so for me, the actionable steps to take are, okay, well, what is your, like, like what is the vision, right? If you want to have 50 trucks or 100 trucks, right? And it doesn't sound like that's your vision to me. Then okay. what what are those people that have 50, 100 trucks doing, right? And so then let's look at that. What are they doing? So then we're setting ourselves up to do the same thing. If like most people, what I see is that you're doing something in the meantime to try to do something else. Right. And so you're like, hey, I'm doing this to to work towards doing something else. And that's where I think a lot of us are stuck at and trapped. Uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, work doing trucks, right? Or truck driving, whatever the case may be. Right. But what's the plan? Right. The plan to have 20 trucks, plan to have 30 trucks, plan to have 50 trucks. What is that plan? And what does it look like? And then let's work backwards to see how do we help uh, work that plan? Because right. the challenges that I see most people have is that they don't have a plan. They're just doing things. And so it makes it hard for anyone to give anyone advice on how to execute a non-plan. Right. So right. that's the thing where I talked about in the beginning where it's a definite, definite a purpose. You know, I know what my plan is, right? And so when I set this out, I showed that in some older videos. Like I wrote out exactly what I want to do how many books I want to write, how many you know content I want to produce and all this right. kind of stuff. So I had a very specific plan that I was chasing. Uh, and so the question to everybody that's listening, by the way, 114 people right now watching, make sure you hit the like button, is right, think about what is your plan because when you're coming to me, uh, right, and you're saying, hey, you know, I'm in a truck, I want to have more time. But, but what is the, when you, you know, when you got into the trucks and you transfer, right. what was the plan then? Well, when when we started, 
and, and you know, and I think my wife, I don't know, you know, like yesterday or two days ago, she was on the live with me, Stephanie. I don't know if she's here today, but we we map it out, you know, when we started in 2018. It was a five year plan where we'll come in, learn the industry from within. You know, we, we oh, she's she's here. Thank you, babe, for being there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we came in, you know, where we moved from New York to Florida. We sold our house. We could have bought a truck right away, but that was not the, I, I don't think that would have been smart. We wanted to learn from, as a new guy coming in, you know, uh, learn the business, grow a fleet, and one at a time within five years being be out of the truck. My wife okay. got out of, got out of the truck last year. We were able to get out, and this is the year that I'm supposed to come out. Okay. Before this, I didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. To be honest with you, before seeing, you know, my wife and I, when we were in custom FedEx Custom Critical, they deal with a lot of um, DOD, um, um, a lot of government uh, contracts and pharmaceutical. That's how I came into government contract. Because when we had our company, you know, when we started our company, I started, well, you know, how do we get qualified? Because I know my wife and I, we had the DOD uh, clearances. So we okay. were able to go anywhere. So I started researching, you know, how do I make my company DOD, you know, clearance? And then I started finding out, wait, wait a minute, but this is even better. Right. You know, so now, you know, it's, 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 it's still shifting, but now I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Because at the end of the day, what we wanted to be was come in, learn the business, stay in the industry, but be like an authority. And, you know, where we're able to help more people. Because I know, like I said, there's a bunch of us out there of our community that are misinformed, not even misinformed. That's not even the word. They don't even have the information. Right. They don't even know these things exist. Sure. So now, you know, finding this thing out, it's like, oh, my God. You know, I'm so excited to get to learn this stuff. You know, we do have a YouTube channel. Which is, that's our YouTube channel, Just So Mr. Coach. Started as a bilingual channel. And we went to 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 Spanish, you know, because we felt the need there. Our people needed a lot of information, and I still go back and forth when I'm when I'm on the live and stuff like that. But the plan is to be an authority, you know, an authority to help people, you know, to teach people from zero, from zero, from aspiring to be a a a, a truck driver to owning your company. And now with this stuff, I mean, imagine somebody comes in thinking just wanting to have one truck and now you're able to open their mind to, hey, sure. you, know, you could have a contract, you know, and, <laughs> and be somewhere in Dominican Republic, you know, from hey. a beach, you know, managing hey. contracts. That's, and that's a good example of the Dominican Republic. That's a very good example. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's our vision. I would love to see my wife, you know, sunbathing somewhere and I'm, all right, that's the problem. Let's take care of that. You know, we, you know, so and th this is what, we found, you know, and again, we we were chopping at the bit to jump, you know, to get signed up for the lifetime. And I think we, we, you know, we're excited. We know we, you know, once this thing start, we 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 know we're gonna we're gonna take advantage of the information and the structure and things like that. But and and make sure, right? The bigger thing I always tell people: take advantage of the network. I think a lot of people are not tapping in um, right. networks, right? So. Again, you know, the example I gave in the beginning was, right. um, you know, I've leveraged all these things that I've done, right, to continue to grow and develop. And so that's why I could come on here and I can, like, cite off people to talk to in all these different sectors, all these different right. industries, because um, I've just grown my network, like, astronomically over the last four years, five years. And so... Really, um, now it's just I send emails. I send them, I'm pick up the phone. I call people, and they're like, "Yeah, Eric, what's up? What you need?" Right. So it's super easy for me to do. That's so awesome. <laughs> that thing, that's something that really we're all lacking is a community, and that's what we try to give to people. It's hard. Nothing is easy. It's really hard, but uh, we are making an effort, right, at all costs. And so, um, you know, we've got big plans and big visions. And we want to support as many people as possible. So, you know, like I said, we we definitely, you know, I think again, going back to what's your vision, becoming authority, how big, right? Where then we could 
help you connect with some folks because a lot of times the people that um, come into the space, they still want to operate really small and it's hard to help them because the government does it really small. Mm. So I know it seems, you know, I know it seems easier, but uh, it's just as easy to put together like a collaborative uh, and uh, go after something big. Gotcha. gotcha. I mean, uh, I have people, that, you know, working within my network. Sure. I yeah, already have people lined up that are ready for, you know, that they're like, Danny, whatever, you know, let's go. You know, we're ready. So it's just a matter of, and, and I'm going to, maybe I might, might come out wrong saying this, but in our community, sure. you know, very few follow you blindly. Correct. Very yeah, few, if you, you know, it's almost like, show me, it's almost like a New York type of mentality. What have you, you know, and we're from New York. So like, what have you done for me lately? Like, show me that you've done it. And then I believe you. Right. So yeah, but, I, but it happens yeah. late because at that point, you're not going to have time to go back and pull them up. It, it, so, so it's almost like we're looking forward to, because I don't like to speak if I don't know something a hundred percent, like sure. I kind of, so that's why I kind of, I want my wife and I to get into this thing and get as much knowledge as possible. So at least when we're talking, we know the basics of what we're talking. That's what you need. You know, and, 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 and you know, but um, like I said, we're excited. We're, we're, we're excited to, to no, be look, part of, of uh, that second group. <laughs> forward to meeting you guys, looking forward to meeting your wife. And, um, and like I said, connecting and uh, again, right? We can only take you as far as your vision. Right. That's all I could do. Right. Uh, that's it. If you provide the tools, <laughs> you know, if you, you provide the tools, that's, right. you, know, you know, it's what we do with it. It's what you do with it. Right. right. Exactly. You know, we, 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 when we went into, and, 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 you know, again, I, when we went into custom critical FedEx, we had this gentleman that preach certain things. This guy was like an encyclopedia of, FedEx got some critical government errors. And none of the stuff that he preached, he did for himself. Until my wife and I started doing it. And he saw that the stuff that he preached actually worked. And I said, well, how come you don't do this and this and this? And like, I don't know, because I don't. I'm like, come on, man, you're preaching all this stuff and you're not doing it yourself? He went from having one little truck where he was happy to now he has five trucks. Wow. And 10 people working. And he was happy with one truck. And he would come, and within six months, my wife and I, two trucks, people working for us. And he's like, oh, my God, it, it, it is actually working, the stuff that I breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, you can. the only thing you could do is provide the tools. And that's why we, like you said before, we believe in what you guys got going, and we invested. And I think we're, we're in the right place. I think we're in the right place. I look forward to, to meeting with you guys and talking with folks and then connecting with uh, some other people that um, are, you know, in your space as well so that hopefully, right, someone can um, be the next Chris, the next Demetrius and take off. So, uh, right. you know, I hope you saw that. Com I hope you've seen those videos with Chris. Facing. I definitely, I, I, I thought at first there were, that's when I understood that, that for the first time, uh, that's why I put it on my title, uh, a asset base and uh, non-asset base. Because at first I thought they were truck drivers, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm like, no, 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 no. Oh, and they're saying that they're actually. They learned something already. Right. So I said, hold on, hold on a second. So they're actually saying that if we come in with their knowledge, but also we have asset base, it's a plus for us, and we already have the asset. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> so I lined up the ball. <laughs> How you doing today, sir? How are you? Good, good, good. And yourself? Uh, no complaints, man. I was supposed to get off at 8 o'clock. I'm still on here, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. What you Pleasure. got? I got a, a quick question because um, I'm, I'm just now, just saw your channel about like a week or two recently. Okay. And I just want information, like, how would you know, you know, which particular industry to pursue? Like, for example, myself, I was in teaching, worked with probationary youth for about six years, level four. 
was transitioning into to tech, uh, specifically IT, uh, but wanted to know, like, how would I know the opportunities, whether it be contracting or subcontracting, uh, to approach that that matter? Um, so again, um, you know, you asked two different questions. Okay. Your first question is, how do you know which area to go after? And then your second question was how to attack it, mm -hmm. right? So that was your two questions, am I correct? Yes, okay, all right. <laughs> I know. So, you know, I'm just making sure I'm paying attention, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm just making sure I'm paying attention. Um, so that again, that's the purpose of tonight. Right. Is a lot of people don't know where they're going and that's what makes it hard for them to go in a certain direction. Uh, earlier today, and uh, I don't know how long you've been listening tonight, but we had two people on here that do workforce development. Okay. And so what you're talking about with the, the at the, the youth and at risk youth, I think you mentioned something to that effect. Right. Uh, that's an area where, you know, the government's having challenges in finding people to create those kind of programs. So if you ran or worked in one of those kind of programs, that's an area where right now the government's throwing a lot of money in people who can stand up workforce training, workforce development programs, especially for distressed communities and at-risk youth. Okay. Huge. So uh, if that's something that you, you've done before, you have experience in doing, that's an area that is uh, it doesn't matter who's in office. They're always trying to help the youth, right? There's all, all, the government itself is always trying to find ways in which they can um, uh, help take the youth and give them access to better jobs and get them off the street because that ultimately gets them off the government system and off their pay, you know, because a lot of these people are, you know, they're getting subsidies and things like that. So uh, that's an area that's very needed in the government space. Okay, great, great. What was the second area you talked about? I, I would still like to work with you for probably like a philanthropy, but I'm transitioning into tech actually. And so to philanthropy is different. There's no philanthropy here. Okay. <laughs> I mean, no. there's not philanthropy in the government. I mean, they give out contracts and grants. Yeah, yeah, but I'm interested no in transitioning going into tech and IT, and wanted to know, like, how would be the point of tech, or what would exist the opportunities out there in general? How would I attack that? Right. So tech and IT is a, is a big space, right? So when you say tech IT, I mean, you've got, uh, you know, you got network administration, you've got software, you've got AI, you've got yeah. blockchain. You've got, I mean, it's you've got cybersecurity, you've got, you know, you manage products, you can uh, upgrade systems. That's a huge space. Yeah. So you've got to be more definitive about where in tech and IT that you want to go at. But once you do define the areas, then, um, Really, once you've figured out exactly what areas you want to go to in tech and IT, then uh, all the tools that I mentioned are the same for researching where the opportunities are at. The, uh, the, the databases are the same. The way that you research are the same, right? You're going to basically use one of two databases to do your research to find out where are all the contracts. And then, once again, once you've identified the space or the sector. Okay. Uh, so when, there's a video that I have that's very popular called does the government buy what I sell? That's a video you can Google and pull it up with me. And that'll tell you right through all the steps to research your particular market for your sector after you've made that decision. So once you've made that decision, then you say, okay, I want to do, say, uh, network management, right? Once you've made that decision, you want to do network management, then you go to essentially, um, You'll research the database that has all the network management contracts. And then it'll tell you who gave out the contracts, the offices who gave out the contracts. Oh, wow. And then once you know the offices, then that's when you go reach out to the small business office to talk to them about opportunities, right, um, for your particular firm and your company. Wow. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Is, is, is what what do you think about the merging? Just one more question. I know other people want to uh, have a question. What do you think about the emerging marketing of the uh, space travel, actually? Because I know with Richard Branson doing and Jeff Bezos, um, but there's another company called, um, I don't know, but it's called Space Travel. And basically, instead of using the rocket, they're going to use a balloon. And it takes about an hour to leave here from Earth. And then you hover over for four hours, almost like a bit of a leisure a uh, recreational type of it behind it because it's one pilot, seven people. The reason why I ask is the fact that what do you think about that market uh, where it's going to be much more accessible and much more commonly 
they say after year 2030, uh, no different than almost flying a plane or, or being a passenger on a plane for that matter. I, I don't, when you say, what do I think about? What do you mean when I think about? Do I think there's opportunity there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, opportunity because, you know, there's only like three or four major players in the game, but it, it's almost like the, the first iPhone that came out and then five, 10 years later, there's so many others coming to the market. I think it's going to be no different than that. And I just wanted your perspective as an expert. Um, you know, what do you think about that? The opportunity or just other uh, contracts? Well, that, I can say that the government's pouring a lot of money into space. So um, I basically follow the money. So they're putting a lot of money into space, space right. exploration. And so, you know, I, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter. Like if that's something that that's an area that uh, you have familiarity to you in or you have uh, relationships in, then it's, it's, you know, again, every area is lucrative. Yeah. But I yeah. you, there's no, like, I don't think people realize this. Every area is lucrative. Right. Uh, I was on a call today or yesterday. We're talking about gene sequencing. Mm. OK, uh, that's an area that's new as well. Right. They're going to be doing, you know, if you look online and you're a veteran, they're asking veterans to submit tests. They're going to be doing gene sequencing. So all these new things, uh, Department of Energy just got a huge budget for clean energy that went with the CHIPS Act. Right. The administration put out. We want to become whatever. We want to become fossil fuel dependent. You know, we want to save clean energy, whatever, for the next 20 years. Like, all, they just threw $50 billion into that. So there's not. Every area has, like, hundreds of billions of dollars in it. Every space, every every area. Education, transport, uh, fuel, gas, oil. Every area has that kind of that money. So you just have to decide which area you want to go after. Yeah, I was just, it was a side note, so I'm primarily... Oh, I know. But, <laughs> hey, if you want to send a balloon up to space, <laughs> listen, by yeah, the way, yeah, yeah, it calls me the since, you're, since you're new to my show, you say you just start watching me, look up yeah. Carol Craig from Craig Technologies. She's actually the third person that sends things to space. I had her on my podcast. Oh, wow. Let me write that down. You know, the thing is, you know what, and, and, and Danny, one of the things that bothers right. me about our community is we love entertainment. So we watch movies and Netflix stuff all day. That lady who sends stuff to space, I think that video has like 1,000 views in four years or three years. Mm. There's well, three people that send stuff to space. There's, again, SpaceX, which you already know, yeah. right? And then you have- Blue uh, Origin? Uh, Blue Jeff. Origin, yes. Right, which is Jeff Bezos and Carol yes. Craig, Craig Technologies number three. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> my podcast. But, but that one, it's not Netflix, you know, it's not- <laughs> <laughs> it ain't the new, you know, comedy special, blah, 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 blah. Hey, to, to it, me, Chris, Chris and Demetrius, were, you know, they've been a Netflix movie for me, you know, and I keep going back, going back, you know, when, I guess it's easy for us to pay attention to so many things because there's so many big numbers and different stuff that you could get distracted by, you know, by not, pay, not focusing on what you could be best at. Hey, you see what that says? Men are anxious to improve their circumstances, but unwilling to improve themselves. So true, so true. Yeah, so, just yeah, I, I, I was listening earlier to uh, to the video you guys had, and, and one one particular uh, statement that really resonated with me was was people and the gentleman, uh, Mr. Coach, was saying people don't think bigger of themselves. Like first, I grew up in uh, South Central LA in the eighties and nineties, and that's all you see. That's all you know. Like a bit of a one tunnel vision. But me, I never, like, long story short, I was recruited uh, for a multi-level marketing company. I said, no, I wasn't interested. But he he went up to me and he said, what's a lot of money to you? And I said at that time, you know, eighty to $100,000. And then he looked at me and he said, I make a million. And it wasn't the money per se, but it was just my my limited thinking of a frame of a 50 by 50 with his 100 by 100. If you say that, for example, a kid in Compton or, or South LA where I grew up personally than versus someone in Beverly Hills or Malibu or Sherman Oaks, mm -hmm. they would look at you like in a month, they, they make that in a month, they, they look at you like it's peanuts because right. they're thinking so much more bigger. And if you're around that space, those people cause you to think more and, and be more, want more for yourself and community and your family as well. So right. that, that really shifted my thinking in general. No, that's great. And that's why I recommend this little bitty book to read that yeah. on the back, it says right here, 
when you understand that what you think influences what you become, you can learn to adjust your thought life accordingly. So, so Just change that part internally. Like if you so, change that internally, I'm telling you, your your life is going to change. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Miss Fifi, if you're listening, we got to order those things in audio <laughs> because I'm driving and I need to have that. You know, that, that will be my podcast. <laughs> Your show, do it in Spanish. Yeah, it'd be excellent. Oh, wait, they don't do Spanish. So this one, a messenger Garcia is a great one in Spanish. This okay, is great. Okay. That's great. I, I'm, in, I'm in a constant fight with that too, like the rhinoceros. I oh, understood yeah. better. Oh, yeah. I, I understood it better in English than in Spanish. Okay, well, <laughs> so this book I recommend, a messenger Garcia. Okay. This was a book that the Marines used to use for a long time, right? Mm. And they dropped it. Check this out. Why well, they said they dropped it? Because they they argued that it reinforced the kind of ideas about leadership and how the wrong ideas about leadership and how to follow orders. The book encourages troops to complete tasks without asking questions. And mm. so they didn't like that people were questioning and they wanted you to follow orders. See, this is the thing that people don't get. This is what they're trying to get you to do. Right, instead of thinking so from, from school, from from middle school, from oh. from kindergarten all the way up to college, be an obedient worker. That's yeah. what they want to be. This, I mean, it, it says it on the freaking article. Yeah, huh. and, and and the community where you live in that, because if you mention about space travel, like one of my goals up by twenty thirty, I want to go to space travel, uh, with a balloon travel with that. And it's it's hundred twenty five thousand dollars right now, but after twenty thirty, it's going to go to fifty to sixty k. But if you have average, average Joe Smo, they'll think, oh, it's impossible. You can't do that. You know, you, you got to go to NASA, this and that. But when you're around like minded people, it cause you to think more and, and and be more, do more. Though you know, one of my podcast guests, I just told you, send stuff to space. I got another podcast guest that sends satellites to space. Huh. These people have already been on our show, and they look. They have stuff in space right now. Matter of fact, Maria is the one that went and got, went, went and got her as a podcast guest uh, and brought her here. What was the name of the woman you mentioned? I'm, I'm going to write that down. I think Maria Maria put the link to that video on, on the chat. Just, okay. I don't know if you're able to see it. This is her, look, these are her products in and, space. And hi, Maria. <laughs> this is Craig's product in space. In space. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Definitely want to go to that. So, I mean, and again, she was on my show. The video has like a thousand views. It's sad. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's unfortunate. And, and to, uh, one thing that I could tell you, and for, this is for me, it always been like that. I could easily be motivated by somebody that Maria could interview on her podcast, on your podcast, that isn't a student that actually is is um is um sharing their experience only because we're they're so close to where we're at right now like we just had the first step that Absolutely. they could be 10 step ahead but you feel like okay man, if i'm looking at the videos when they were on the chat talking to you eric just last year and now they're right. you, you could see the confidence how they talk and how they right. so something must have happened you know right. and and to me it's not about that fancy car or that whatever. It's somebody that, just like me, that was hungry just like me, that had questions just like me, oh, yes. and exactly. boom, they got it done. So I that, to me, that, that, that touches to me. No, that is <laughs> no, that's true. That's perfect. All right, let's, let me let me bring Tony up last. Um, uh, I could I, You could take me out if any. If, yeah, take if, you if, out. Okay, if yeah, anything. All right, thanks. All right, Tim, I'm going to pull you off. I'm gonna keep okay. Thank you. All right, Tony, you got the spot. You're closing it out hey. for the <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, Eric, nice to uh, finally talk to you. Um, yes, yeah, so you actually, I was actually, well, I watched a lot of your videos. You actually made a video on a comment I made because I was so confused about certifications. Okay. So I was sitting in my living room and I saw, I'm like, oh, he's talking to me because. You were you were talking about certifications and you were saying you don't need them. And then yeah. I watched a, a video of you saying get your certification. So I was so confused yeah. about you saying both. But 
after studying and listening and watching, I understood what you actually, that, that video kind of explained it, what you were saying about certifications. You were basically like, you need to learn your stuff first before you think certifications are going to hand you out any contracts. Correct. Exactly. So that's basically, and I'm glad I watched that video because you spent all this time getting a certification and your mindset, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to pitch with that. They're going to give me something. Well, no, you've got to earn your keep first. So me, I don't have any certifications. Just like like you started out, like I, I have nothing. I just, and like I just won my first contract today. <laughs> so I'm going to go, I'll go back to like the books. Like I read, um, it's called the, the Making of a Black Millionaire, A.G. Yep. Gaskin. Okay. Um, he was born in like the late, 1800s early 1900s and he basically became a millionaire and he had he bought land he was in the war he went to europe for a little bit but the mindset i got from him was if he did it in the 18 or 1900s why can't i do it now absolutely i have no excuse no 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 so um and then so to fast forward today, so I signed up for GovCon Giants in like November 2021. Okay. But I had just I had just started building my car dealership. Um, so I didn't I didn't really do a lot with the government contract business. Yeah. So I was okay. building my car dealership and then just realizing how the economy is shifting. Mm. And I, one day I was in my kitchen, I remember. I remember you always saying. The government is the biggest buyer of everything. I'm like, I'm sitting here trying to learn how to advertise the people. And I have the government will buy my stuff. So I'm like, why am I trying to figure out how to do Google ads and all this? Right. Let me just learn how to do a capability statement and <laughs> respond to sources sought. Right. And let's let's get it done. So right. January of this year, yeah. I said, I'm going to do government contracts this year. I still got my car dealership, but. I focused on government contracts mm. and I talked to a couple people, made some bids, lost some people told me I couldn't penetrate the tire market because I'm the tire guy. So, uh, you know, you got Michelin and Goodrich. They got all these dealers and people are like, no, you can't get in. It's hard. They're telling me don't update my DSBS profile. They didn't look at it. But my what? mindset was like, nah, nah. <laughs> and I just, I, you know, and the thing was how I picked my niche was for my car dealership, we sell car, you know, we sell special cars from Japan, you okay. know, we import them, but we sell parts. So what I did was I said, well, I'll pick something that's not going to go out. So I picked tires and vehicle parts. Sure. So I narrowed it down and then it didn't seem like it was work. Yep. You know, so then, uh, just persistence. And the main thing is picking up the phone. Right. I talked to a contracting officer five times yesterday. Every time I called him, he answered the phone five times. And Every he called me at like 830, like three times, three different days in a row. So you got to pick up the phone, which you guys always express. So but it was just the mindset. It was just persistence. Figure out what you're going to do. Don't just chase the money. Figure out what you're going to do. You can't ask, hey, what should I do in government contracts? I, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. What, you tell, what, what do you, I don't know. Do you like pencils? Do you like paper? Or, I mean, or, what's your skill? You can't, you got to answer that question yourself. Right, right. Can't answer that. Right. And then once you figure that out and you have to like what you do, because then it's not work. Like I spent hours and hours of watching videos and webinars. But it doesn't really feel like work because it's I like doing it. Absolutely. So I just wanted no. to thank you guys. Mindset was good. I definitely read both of your books. Right. I definitely stole a couple of your books from your bookshelf when you used to have them in the background. I definitely like uh I think I, I read uh The Making of a Titan. Oh it, that's one of yours in the background. I was like, let me read that book. So yeah, I, I definitely been watching them. Right. And this comes out of this book. Get your happiness out of your work, and you'll never what happiness. Yeah, is. exactly. Yeah, definitely, so just, definitely. But yeah, so you stole some of my books. That's interesting. So look, um, I'm gonna do you a solid, right? So now my man comes up, 
this lady, Tina White, she does tires. I talked to her. Okay, you talked to Tina? I talked to Tina. Yeah, I, I, I talked to Tina because you had I recommended her. I I, yeah, I talked to her on the phone. Got her number. You told me, I think you recommended her in one of your videos. So I found her on LinkedIn because you were like, get your LinkedIn profile right. If you're not on LinkedIn, don't talk to me. So right. I did that. I talked to her. And uh, she's in tires, but she does like state and local level. Yes. So right. I, I don't. Uh, so. But she also started to do some stuff with corporate companies. Yeah. So she. Yeah. We had a conversation. So right. she's got a, her network is very, very big now. She's got a lot of big players. So that's my goal. I, I want to be I want to own like, well, I want to grow the Tudor group to be like a minority owned huge tire company where people can call us like these other dealers that you see their name everywhere. Okay. Did you make the Tuesday call with uh, Mike's son from DLA? Oh yeah, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just making it. Yeah, I was there. All right. Yeah. I've been, I, listen, I've been doing my work. I've been doing all my right. homework. No, no, no. I got you. No, because uh, you know, they have a, like a, they've got the DLA system down. So, you know, um, I'm sure that they wouldn't mind like showing you like how their system works because you guys are selling like you're selling tires and even auto parts are different. They're selling aviation parts. Yeah, I reached out to them, too, because I, I actually I think on maybe a few weeks ago or a month ago, you I was like, what was that company with the DLA? And you were like, yeah, 2A Aerospace or. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a lot um, So well, I reached out to them on LinkedIn, but. If you have a hard figure, time, we can connect you. I talk to Mike all the time. Mike yeah. will talk to him. Especially, all you have to do is tell him you're a student. He doesn't want to talk to people that are not students. So you tell him you're an academy. Yeah, you, you can tell, like, I, I could tell they were like, all right, listen, but it, I'm not going to talk to you for free. But I told him, I was like, listen, I, I'm not a newbie. Like, I built a car dealership from the ground up. Like, I, you know, I'm in the GovCon right. Giants. And then yeah. he kind of opened up a little bit. Yeah, but they'll talk. To, I would, uh, they'll, Mike, they'll talk to you. Trust me. Oh, uh, okay. We could we could make that happen. Just send Maria. Tell them we could put we could get you on a, a email with them and set up and have you simple call with them. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, questions you want to ask, you know. Um, so think about questions you want to ask, and we could set that up. No problem. Okay. I mean, another. I you know, there's another thing I, avenue I want to go into too. With you know, we'll talk about it later, but yeah, uh, BAE because they have a lot of parts and stuff that they sell for some of these military vehicles. BAE. Um, Listen, um, we just had—I just had her on my podcast, Diane Dempsey, the the person from BAE Systems. I know you were making fun of it because people say Bay. They say I was like, I was like, all right, all right. I was like, listen, listen. I'm, I'm gonna come to their defense. I'm gonna come to their defense because there's no periods after the letters. So if there was periods and they said that, okay, I get it. But usually, if there's if it's an acronym. You know, there's or, or it's abbreviation. They they put the period. So that that I'm just giving people a a, a defense. defense. <laughs> you know what? The fact that you knew that I said that means you did watch me. So you you're up on it. So I can't even knock you because you come up here and you said everything. Like no, I already knew that. I knew that. I knew that. So I can't even tell you nothing. So, but that's the difference, right? So you're now plugged in. You're in sync with us. You're in tune. That's why things are changing. That's what I tell people. They're not even in sync. They haven't watched a video. They haven't watched the content. They don't. You know, they don't know anything. So, um, but that's good. All right. So listen, I'm going to run, but that was a great story. I love it. I love it. I love it. I thank you for sharing, man. I appreciate that. That's a good. Yeah. Story. I mean, thank you guys too. I mean, you know, I'll be, I'll be here next month. Uh, you know, we're back on our Tuesdays. There you go. Sounds like a plan. All right. All right listen, make sure, uh, when you're ready to talk to Mike, reach out to Maria and she'll set that up. Okay. Okay. All thank right. you. Right, appreciate it. Bye -bye. All right, everyone. So look, I, Hey, I didn't even make it to all my books, but I think I did give you guys some stuff uh, that you need. Um, we, somebody else that I will tell you to connect with, uh, Tina White. Look her up on LinkedIn. Connect with Tina White. She's one of my. Uh, she's she's actually going to be coming on here soon. She keeps promising me she's going to come on our channel. She's got a great story of meeting some relationships through Amazon, and so she was going a corporate route, like he said, but. She's got some um, contracts uh, through her relationships from Amazon. So definitely another person on LinkedIn. 
And like he said, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, get you a LinkedIn profile. Like he said, don't talk to me if you don't have your LinkedIn together. Because why? This is how I introduce you to people is through LinkedIn. I don't care about your website. So don't tell me I got a website. Nobody is going to go from uh, LinkedIn to your website. But if you don't have a LinkedIn, I can't send people because I can't say, oh, good, check out this person's website. No, I'm going to say they're going to the first thing they're going to do is look you up on LinkedIn. If you have zero presence, they're not going to even go to your website. That's today's world. Welcome to 2023. Sorry, I don't make the rules. I just say it goes. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. Reach out to us if you need help. Any questions, concerns, comments. It's been a lot of fun. Hit the like button. Share this with three friends because why? How are you going to build your network is by networking with other people. So again, increase your net worth by increasing your network. If you share this with two or three friends, they're going to say, oh, you do government contracts? I didn't even know. Let me introduce you to this person, that person, that person. That happened to us today. I forget. I even forgot that story. We got a call about um, from one of my um, people who said, hey, um, this guy's going to introduce me to um, someone in the private equity world because of uh, a contact that you told him about. And so now they're going to connect me. So again, if you don't share with people what you're doing and you're doing this in secrecy and you're not telling everybody because you're not excited enough, either find some way to get more excited about it. Uh, find some way, maybe by telling people they'll get excited for you, but you've got to find that within you. I can't tell you what to do um, in terms of a business idea, stuff like that. You've got to figure that out alone. But just know that the government spends a lot of money in a lot of different places. So thanks. Have a great night.